Hey YouTube, this is Fragments of Memory one more time. And I know I haven't made a video in a while, but I kind of felt the need to make one tonight. What to talk about? Oh yeah, the whole Juan Williams. If you don't know Juan Williams, who was a news analyst for NPR Radio, or NPR, National Public Radio, was also like a contributor to the Fox News Network. Well, recently... Uh, Juan Williams was on Fox News and he made the comment of how seeing someone in Muslim garb made him nervous when he would get on an airplane based on what happened after 9-11. And of course, it, it seems these comments have gotten a lot of backlash. <clears throat> these comments caused him to get fired from NPR and then there was backlash from his supporters. Now, here's the issue I... I I take with Juan Williams. On one hand, he should know better. He is a broadcaster, he is a journalist, he is a commentator, and he should know to communicate responsibly. He's not an entertainer, he's not a, a comedian, he's not a singer, he's not a recording artist, he's a commentator. He's someone that's supposed to be credible because he's a newsman. And here this newsman gives his personal opinion, which in and of itself is not a problem, but you do sound like a bigot. He sounds like a bigoted person when he makes it, those statements because that's the same thing as a white lady saying, every time I see a black guy, I got mugged by a black person. So every time I see a black person, I'm going to clutch my purse close to me. And that was, a, that was, that was something a, um, a guy I know posted on, on Facebook as his commentary to this. And I just thought about that. I'm like, yeah, how would that be if I said, hey, if I see someone that's Asian and someone Asian did me wrong, did a crime against me, I'm going to judge all Asians. So on one hand, Juan Williams getting fired, tough on him, but those are the breaks when you're in the public eye, when someone's looking at you in the public. And between you and me, and I, I don't mean to sound hateful or anything, but that was funny to me. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I laughed at that dude. <laughs> Just because, well, my personal opinion about him is he always seems to want to play the yes man to conservatives. And don't, to, the cons, to Fox News especially, not necessarily conservatives. And the one thing I have issue with is, don't get me wrong, if you're a, a member of a minority group, if you're black, if you're Asian, if you're Latino, and you happen to have conservative views, I don't dispute with you on that. However, it seems that when a lot of these news outlets like Fox News attack someone in a minority group, they always tend to grab someone from a minority group to, to give them carte blanche to say some of the most ignorant and asinine and downright vitriolic things. But yet, you know, that he seems to be the yes man of the puppet. And nothing's wrong with being a conservative and being black or being Asian. But you have like the Juan Williams, you have people like Michelle Malkin, who, though she is the daughter of immigrants, the daughter of Filipino immigrants, she she likes to go against immigration, even though she too could be considered an anchor baby based by the based on the definitions that come forth. Now, <clears throat> that's one thing. And another thing is Right now, we're, in, we're heavy into politics because there's an election coming up in November. And I notice the political game is not civil. I don't think it's ever been civil, but I notice more attacks are coming out, more attack commercials. And I notice that all these commercials tend to prey on the fears of the public. Right now, the economy's not doing so good. Right now, people are losing their jobs and foreclosures are looming large and everything else. And it seems that these people under the people that make these commercials understand this and are playing to our fears. They're stoking the fires of our fears, if I may use that phrase. And instead of just instead of us going out and doing our own research, because I now make it a point to go online and research what's going to be on the ballot. So when I vote, I can be an informed voter. And I'm sure many do, but but the general population doesn't. I think we they vote with their emotions, which a lot which a lot of us do. Um, if you're a Christian, we like to throw that Judeo-Christian morality shtick at you. 
And we'll even throw 9-11 and, and the terror of Islam supposedly at you. And you'll vote for the candidate that's going to protect you from that. If you're someone that loves, you know, worried about losing his job. Well, there's a candidate that's here to save the jobs. And if you're concerned about national security, they're going to prey on that fear. And they're going to prey on all those other fears. And we as the public just sort of go along and we la di da -di, just go along and just get caught up in that hype. And then all of a sudden we're just like, you know, we expect that politician to magically fix our thing. We expect the politician to pull a Barbara Eden from I Dream a Genie, you know, fold the arms and go boing and everything just magically is fixed. And it doesn't work that way. That's not real life. Real life, there's labor, there's, there's work. And I don't think that any politician is a panacea. A panacea is a cure-all and the politician can't cure everything. Number one, the politician has to undo what the previous politician did before them. And then that politician has to implement things. And when there's implementation, implementation takes a while to get blended into the public consciousness. And too many people think that, oh, I press my voting button and then everything magically changes overnight. No. The politician is not a panacea. The politician is not a god. The politician is not a not an angel or a mystical, magical being. The politician is flesh and blood, a human just like you and me. They eat, they sleep, they go to the toilet, they they get sad, they get happy, they make love, they do all of that stuff, just like every other human being on the planet. But somehow we assume that because they're in a political office that they somehow get these powers to fix everything. And some things can't be fixed by the politicians. Some things can't be fixed by the law. Sometimes I think that there are certain things within us as human beings that need to be fixed. And that's only something that we can do on an individual level. You know, like we talk about corporate greed. Well, let's stop greed in our hearts before we stop talk, start talking about legislating corporate greed. Or let's fix... Let's fix our keeping up with the Joneses mentality. Let's not watch the TV programs that cause us to envy. Let's not, let's not listen to the music that puts those thoughts in our minds. But instead we think some outside force, and I'm not necessarily talking about God per se, because I still think prayer works. I still think that you need to be in tune with your faith, in tune with your God. I do believe in that, and I do believe that you need to do that often on a regular, everyday basis. But I also think that there are certain things that we need to change within ourselves. We need to kind of look at ourselves and go, hey, is this good? Is this bad? Should I do it? Not necessarily can I do it, but should I do it? And that goes in a whole other discussion. But what else? Um, also, get out and vote if you don't, if you don't vote. You won't have a say in anything, so at least get out there and vote. Whether you're liberal, conservative, Republican, Democrat, constitutionalist, libertarian, go vote for your candidate that you feel is the best for the job. Now, if you vote for the candidate that's the best for the job, or you think is the best, and they don't win, so what? But you at least had a voice, so get out there and put your voice out there. And... In addition to that, just just try to be a good citizen on your on your individual level too. I think the problem is we're expecting government officials and, and politicians and laws to, to, to make everything all right. When let's on an individual level, when I'm dealing with my neighbor, when I'm dealing with the sales clerk at the store, when I'm dealing with the waiter who gives me the hamburger, Let's all try that decency on that level. And then maybe that will kind of fan out and do the butterfly effect and do the ripple effect and kind of go out into the world, into the universe, into the ether, however you want to put it. And that way we can affect change. Because it's not going to be done through the politician or the commentator. The commentator has their part in their role, but the commentator speaking through the microphone ain't going to help neither. It's got to come from within. There, I have said my piece. Thank you so much. If you watch this, if not, I'm still going to have my catharsis. Take care. <laughs>